Hey, since it's been a while, can you describe what you feel like you lost during COVID workouts? And, oh, like, I know, I know you guys did everything you could to manage it and maximize it. But how significant was that and what these guys lost during a year or two months? Yeah, that was, um, that was awful, by the way. The train, those minimum numbers of eight, maximum numbers of eight at a time. Um, there could be no contact. Communication was the yeah. worst. Um, spotting you couldn't do. Uh, you couldn't have any team workouts together. Basically, they couldn't even get a breakdown after a training session or a workout. So you lost a lot of that, you know, togetherness, relationship stuff. Um, it was just hard. It was hard to have everybody separate. You had. You had a weight room set up in, our, in the weight room that was spread out with only eight, eight players. You had another weight room set up in the indoor with eight players. So there was no, I mean, sometimes I didn't see, I didn't see a guy all day because I was outside or inside or vice versa. So it was hard. It was really hard. We tried to make the best of it like everybody else, but I think we lost a lot. Like we have these conversations about, well, um, this team needs to get more toughness, they need more leadership this year. Like, I know you're not making excuses for it, but I would have to think that a lot of that comes from the things that were taken away. Absolutely, 100%, 100%. Yeah. It's just hard. It's just, because everything was different. And uh, you also had to be, from a physiological standpoint and a safety standpoint, you have to assume for those three months when they were home, they did nothing. So the progressions were a lot slower, just, you know, oozing them in. By the time you get them to the point where they would have been, camp started. Oh no, not here. Camp didn't start. Oh, it did. Then it didn't. So I think that affected us in every way. Would you sense the leadership issue because of that? Would you sense it's not the same because these guys have not been together. All that cohesion. Yeah, I, I think if, if you're not in a position to lead, you really can't lead. Leadership is those daily experiences. You know, setting a standard and making sure everybody's holding up to that standard. If you don't have a standard to set, how can you lead? It's, it's just, it's, it's extremely hard. Are you all caught up now? I think, yeah, I think we're caught up. Um, and we made really good progress over the winter. And it's exciting now. I can't wait to get back and get started. Well, and Ryan talked about how leadership was a real emphasis in the offseason. How did that manifest itself? And where do you feel the leadership level is right now? Yeah, so again, you know, even sometimes I think you have to go through struggle um, to come out of it stronger. And some of our players last year played for the first time, and there were struggles. And when you come out of it on the other side, now they kind of know what to expect. And now they, you know, some guys just, because they don't play, they feel like they can't be out in front of a group because they haven't stepped on the field and you know, play. So you had a little bit of that, and then, you know, I think because of that, guys stepped up and really different mindset, completely different mindset. In terms of buying in, <clears throat> being all in, being, uh, what do you like about this group? Are they not as committed as three years ago? What do you, what, what's the makeup? What do you think of this? The age of the kids, etc. Yeah, I, I think again, a lot of these guys have the experience on the field. Um, have been in the program. Now it's their turn, um, and the um, the leadership is is on the right trajectory. And it's very exciting because um, I think they understand now what it is, what it truly is, what uh, it means to be a leader. Because again, just because you're a just because you have a title sometimes as being a leader, that doesn't necessarily correlate or translate to actually being a leader and having influence on each other and holding that standard. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Is that also a part of your job, cultivating leadership? I believe it is. I believe um, cultivating leadership because of the daily experiences on putting them in that situation so they can lead, uh, whatever it may be. And coaches aren't involved a lot. Now it's, the rules have changed a lot here in the last five to ten years. But they're with us more than anybody. So 
Um, you get to see that. You get to, you know, I think part of my job is to help drive the, the culture, whatever our culture, you know, which is the fight. And then that's, that's part of it. So, and help those guys through it. Nick, how much easier is it to cultivate a culture when you have, and leadership when you have a second year starting quarterback? I mean, that's, oh, that's such an important good. position. Like, it seems like it'd be easier to have leadership on your roster when you've got a guy at that position who, who's done it before. Well, if you look back at history, history tends to repeat itself. So if you look at Justin Fields, his first offseason, never stepped on the field. And his second year, which is COVID, so you really can't use, you know, it's hard to say that one. But he was a different leader. He was a different player his second year. CJ has now gone through those struggles and the, the ups and downs. Now he kind of gets it, and I think it's going to be – still going to be hard, but I think it'll be a little bit easier for him. I'm assuming you saw him take those steps you know, in practice and things like that when you're out there watching, but have you seen those steps in the weight room from CJ? Being a leader, not just you know in a huddle or, or calling plays and stuff like that, but, but also when you guys are you know, in the middle of December and January. Yeah, he, he, yeah he, uh, he's, he does a really good job when you're in that struggle with his – with his guys, with his with his boy. I mean, it's it's good. It's good. Ryan said it wasn't always like that. Like early on, he didn't no. Like that no. Where, where was he and where is he now? Um, he's much improved. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Has it been easier for him to do that leadership part? Because like Justin's kind of got ruined by COVID. Like second yeah, year. you're right. Yeah. Wayne's only here for a year as a starter. And it's been a while since you guys have had a multi-year starting quarterback. But normal world. Has it been maybe easier for CJ to kind of grow into that role this offseason because it is as normal as possible? I think it's easier than, than the, the examples you just gave. Um, but every day we're just trying to – I just want to make sure he sees it from all views, not just, you know, three-step drop. You got, you know, not just football, but from all views. Because part of being a leader is – Everybody's watching you, everybody's listening to you, everybody's feeling you. And if you don't have those three characteristics of being seen, being heard, and being felt, then you're really not a leader. And, you know, I sometimes have, uh, I don't want to say an argument, but I have a view on being a leader that, you know, people say leader by example. I don't understand what that means. You mean you're doing what's expected. Right? Leader by example, what? He just. But if, if, you're not, if you're not heard, if you're not felt by the guys next to you, and obviously if you're not seen, then you're not a leader. So if you don't have those three characteristics, you're not a leader. You have no chance to be a leader. So every day we just want to make sure that he's felt, he's heard, and he's seen in all those aspects. Which of those three aspects with, with quarterbacks have you seen that you've taken the longest to play? Oh, boy. I, they're all different. They're all different. What about, what about with him? <laughs> um... He likes to talk. So like, he likes to talk, and he does a great job around a player, so you can hear him. Um, I think a lot of times it's just, I think his thing was learning how to work at that level, so being seen at the level that he needs to work at. And he always tells, I'm just a quarterback. I, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. You are the quarterback. So you got to get better in all those areas. They were talking about how you guys had the squads during yeah, the yeah. workouts. Yeah, um, yeah. Was he a leader, and are we allowed to know who the, all the other leaders of the squads were? Um, he was a leader, and um, are you allowed? If the coach didn't want it, everybody to know, I'd say you're not allowed, but he was one. Um, he'll probably be one here in the summer. I, he better be one or more in trouble. Uh, and it, it was awesome. It was awesome to put those guys in that position and really be uncomfortable sometimes as a leader. And if you're not uncomfortable, Go through that struggle. You don't. You don't learn. Are you guys like keeping score with the competition. Oh yeah, we keep score of everything. Who squad won? Um, who won it last year? year? Oh god, I can't remember. We had eight squad. We had twelve squads. I'm trying to think who won. Oh, squad squad ten won. I'm gonna assume that's not CJ squad. It was not CJ squad. I can't. I'm trying to. I got a blank right now. What kind of kid is CJ? Awesome. Big hearted. Big hearted, um, you know, really um, wears his emotions on his sleeves at times, but really, really, really cares. He's a great kid. Not a doctor, but you're the closest thing we've got here. Can you give any kind of updates? No medical updates on anything, I can't say. Can yeah. That's not my job. What, what about. 
What about defensively? We're talking about CJ Live being the not only the quarterback, but kind of the quarterback of the offense in the weight room. What do you see from these guys defensively, the defensive leaders, that tells you that, that the leadership is going to be at another level from where it was last year? Uh, again, I think you got to look at. I just had told, just told, talk some a, a recruit about. You know, last year you had the back seven, zero starts. Quarterback, zero starts. Never threw a pass. We won't even let him throw a pass as a freshman. Now it's completely different. So if you look at those guys that have played, been through it, the Tommy Eichenbergs, the, um, you know, obviously Zach Harrison, who was a captain last year, um, Ronnie Hickman, um, you know, you'll have Josh Proctor back. You've got some guys that have been through that struggle, the inside guys that have been here forever, those fifth year guys. Um, and I think they uh, they knew the importance of getting a defense right and doing better. And, Physically, um, were you caught off guard that JT was able to come in here as late as he did? did you still yeah, that, 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 that's, that's an outlier. That doesn't happen very often. That doesn't. So, I guess, like, from your perspective, since you finally got your hands on him normally, what does he look like? I mean, what what does that mean now? He's, he, like he's much improved, and um, he should be able to uh, obviously bigger, faster, and stronger, and more mature, and... You know, been through the program now at least a year. I didn't even been through a year. Um, you know, he should take that next step. What made him happen? Why was he able to do that for other guys? He had a great support system. His dad, Ponce, was like, had a, had a great plan for him. And, um, you know, all the whole step of the way. And it was good. You mentioned, like, physically, not every kid that comes in, regardless of the ratings. Oh, no. Couldn't handle that. What was he physically that he was able to? to I mean, obviously, he's huge talent and got a you know, bunch of genetic potential. I just think he was more prepared because he had the opportunity through his support system to give him that, you know, kind of all the tools that he needed to get ready. And that doesn't happen much. I guess you're a big fan of Tommy Aguilar. Um, I love Tommy Aguilar. Didn't say much, but. Tell me what people should know about Tommy. Um, Tommy really cares. Um, he's a tough guy. I think he he plays football the way, at least I like it. I mean, I like the way he plays football, and I know a lot of others. And he just, he, he's a leader now. He, he's, he doesn't say much maybe in front of the cameras, but he talks, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's pretty requisite for, like, linebackers now with the tough world around. They don't like to talk to us, but they're passionate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Because we have some linebackers that like, that like to talk to you guys. Oh, yeah. Still, really, everybody. Still, still love yeah. to talk. CJ loves to talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we've had, like, Ryan like to talk. Yeah. And, uh, there's been there's been some guys. I guess flipping back over to – Darren Lee like to talk, too. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's all right. Uh, flipping back over to, to the quarterbacks, uh, CJ was pretty small when he got here. He, he's obviously developed. Kyle, not so much. Obviously, still developing. When you get a guy like as small as Devin Brown is, like, wh what's the first step for him to try to get there physically where he needs to be? Well, you got to see. You got to look where he's at um, with all the uh, assessment tools that we have, and then look at his speed, look at his movement, agility all those type things, and then you develop a plan, get with our nutritionist, Kayla Olson, check body fat, muscle mass, all, all the things that we look at, and then set a plan up for them, and then set goals, periodic goals, short-term goals, and then hopefully he comes back, and then by the end of the summer, he's where we, we need him to be, at least you know, doing it safely and then productively. And Are you seeing that from Devin right now? Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's getting better. When you look back at the Michigan game from last year, does that force you to reevaluate when you see you know, your team getting beat in the last game like that? Yeah, I mean, I think if you don't, I think everybody had to look in the mirror. Um, everybody, everybody in this building, from players, coaches, athletic trainers, nutritionists, equipment managers, everything, and just kind of go back and look and, and what happened, why, and then turn over every stone and try to come up with a plan so you know. what do you think it 